Love is Blind season six is insanity. And for anybody that is dating out there, please, you got to listen to this episode because it is gold. Okay, I'm so grateful for Love is Blind, honestly, because there's so many of you amazing people that are putting yourself out there, but you don't know what it looks like to be with someone that you should be running the other way from or how you're showing up as you're dating what you should and shouldn't do. And so Love is Blind is such a great, great show. And this season is the best one so far yet. Like I absolutely love it. And I want to just jump right in. Um, I want to talk about Chelsea and something that, you know, she is just so anxiously attached. And I think so many of you will see Chelsea and it will resonate with you how she is acting. I know that I used to be like Chelsea before I met Will. I used to be so anxiously attached and I feel for her. You know, she just really struggles to see her worth, to see how lovable she is. And she's, she can't get over the idea that, oh my God, someone loves her. And, you know, she shares how she's been cheated on multiple times in her past relationships. She is so insecure and she is showing up with this guy that she finally chooses. And honestly, it really feels like Jimmy chooses her, says, I love you. And she just is all in, you know, this is kind of like when you're going through life of like, oh my gosh, does he like me? Does he like me? Does he like me? And you get blown away that they do. And next thing you know, you're like in a full-blown relationship. And that's not what I want for you. I want you to say, do I like him? Do I like her? Like, do I like this person? Do I want to spend my life with them? And so like Chelsea isn't really showing up like that. She's kind of just because she struggles with her own self-worth, she is just taking whatever comes her way. And as she then chooses Jimmy, you know, by the way, if you haven't seen the show, you got to see it. This is not even a spoiler. Like it doesn't even matter what I say. It's like the Titanic, you know, sinks, right? You still watch the movie and it's still awesome, right? So you still need to see, if you haven't seen it, you should see it. The first six episodes are out and the other six episodes are coming out. Actually, they just came out now. Now that you're hearing this, they just came out. Okay, so Chelsea, let me tell you something. Um, what happens at the party and Jimmy is giving all this attention to AD, this other girl. And he's like, look at that body. Okay. Now let me tell you something and be, I'm going to be really clear. Okay. Guys who are out there, it is so important about respect, respecting your partner and not be gawking at other women and telling your partner how hot someone else is. And it's a lack of maturity and it's a lack of respect. And Jimmy to me is coming off and giving man, man, child vibes, like just massively. I'm not into Jimmy at all. Like I just feel that he just lacks maturity. He's always like, that's unfair. Whenever someone's sharing their emotions with him, he doesn't really want to take any kind of responsibility. Um, and he's just a man child. I'm not into him at all. I just like feel like, what are we doing here, Jimmy? And Chelsea is wanting the reassurance from him. And you could see towards the end of those first six episodes, you see him kind of already getting over it. He's kind of like, um, checkout time, you know, because honestly, when you are, and just so you know, anyone out there who's anxious in a relationship, If you are going into a relationship, you want a securely attached relationship. So if you keep wanting reassurance over and over and over again, a secure person is going to be exhausted by it. And so the ideal situation is for you to believe that you are worthy to feel it right truly and not need someone else to reassure you of your own worth. You should already know it. Right? So Chelsea is a perfect example of what you should not do. Do not get into a relationship when you are so insecure. You got to do that inner work to get to a place where you feel worthy. You know that you deserve love. You know that you're lovable. And now the question is who the hell is going to make the cut? And Jimmy, if Chelsea had me in her corner, I would be telling her, hell no. <laughs> like, what are we doing? You know, like, okay, so the other thing about Jimmy that I don't like how he handled Jessica. He was talking to another girl, Jessica, dating her in the pods, and Jessica had a daughter, you know, has a daughter and shared that with him. 
You know, I think that Jimmy's full of shit. You know, Jimmy didn't say, hey, by the way, I'm a man child myself and I can't even like handle my sh myself, let alone a child. Like he should have just been honest about shit. And he wasn't, and he wasn't really direct. And, and I, I do kind of agree with Jessica on that, but the way Jessica handled it was like just way, way too harsh. Like I just felt like, come on, Jessica, like he's not worth that much energy. Um, she's like telling Jimmy, you ruined this whole experience for me and yada, yada. And you know, she has that victim mindset energy. You know, and all the women in that little, you know, the room, the quarters, the women's quarters tells Jessica, you know, when Jessica finds out that Jimmy chose Chelsea and said, I love you to Chelsea. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, it's not a reflection on you, Jessica. But that's bullshit. It is like, this is where we're all going wrong. This is where people are going wrong. All your friends and all the people around you are saying like, oh my gosh, you're amazing and, and, and fuck him, right? He's an asshole. But at the end of the day, you chose to talk to this guy over and over and over again, didn't pay attention to so many other guys when you could have been digging deeper, you could have asked more questions. You could have said, hey, Jimmy, I have a kid. And like, how do you really feel about it? Like sometimes we don't want, we're scared to hear the truth. We're scared to hear, oh my gosh, they don't, they're not going to show up for us. You know, so you kind of just don't ask those questions. You mentioned it a little bit. I have a kid. You're going to be okay with that, right? Like, you know, you like lead the witness. Like, are you okay with that? Oh, yeah, sure I am. Yeah, of course he's going to say that, right? But this is when you got to really probe his ass. Like seriously, like this is how life looks like. This is how my days look like. How would you show up for my kid Autumn? Like I, I like that. How would you show up for her? I, I would love to know. Oh, I don't know. <sighs> Shit my pants. Like Jimmy, it just, there's no way that Jimmy would have ever been able to answer any of her questions. Like if she really was like just direct and asking him, hey, like how would you show up? Like give him space to really share because Jimmy would have then revealed, you know what? I'm actually really scared and I'm really not ready for, like I, I wasn't even sure if I was ready for marriage, let alone a kid. Boom. That's when Jessica could have gotten her freaking answer, said bye-bye and moved it along to hang out and talk to other guys in the show, right? On the show. But she didn't. She put, she just leaned in, leaned in to freaking Jimmy over and over again. So I don't think Jessica is a victim by any means. I think Jessica didn't dig enough and she's got to learn from that for sure. You know, and I'm, I was rooting for her too, because I am all about the single moms. I work with a lot of single moms, but this is where it's really important that you do that inner work. You feel your worth, you show up and, and you don't have that desperate energy. And that's where I felt that Jessica was so desperate. Like, where is my happily ever after I need it? And that is not going to attract the right person ever. Okay, so that is that. I need to jump into Clay. Clay, oh my gosh, and AD. Um, Clay, to me, off the bat, comes off like a player. And so any of you guys who watch it and you're like, oh my God, he reminds me of, e of me. I'm like, well, that's something to be concerned with. He straight up says, Clay says this to AD, I'm not a good person. Okay, you guys, when someone tells you who they are, you need to believe them. And AD even calls herself fix a hoe. <laughs> she's, she's like, I'm a fix a hoe. And she loves her fixer uppers. I call it the fixer uppers. And I am like t saying to the TV screen, like run AD, like no. And AD says she's been through therapy. Like she started a year ago and she's like really started to, you know, try to work on that because she doesn't feel like she deserves love. She says that. You guys, this is not going to end well for AD. I, I just feel that like, I don't think enough people understand this. If you don't feel like you deserve love, right? Like if you haven't healed these wounds from your childhood, if you haven't healed that, you're not going to show up in life ready to receive the love you deserve. You are going to just accept any kind of bullshit, half-assed love. 
and Clay is all of like like that half ass bullshit. He even says, you know, when they're on, you know, after they already proposed, he says to her, Oh yeah, I'm not gonna let you gain weight. I'm gonna tell your ass to get to the gym. I am like mind blown moment. I'm like, are you shitting me right now? And what's even worse, not so much what he even says, is that AD sits there and listens to his bullshit. And she's like, that's mean. You know, I'm just like, you know, and then he says, thank you. Like, oh, I get it. Like, I'm working on myself. Thanks, AD. But I am not, I can't tell you enough where when, if you're on your journey looking for your person, stop dating potential. Stop being like, oh my God, there's so much, like there's that nice part about him. There's some things that, you know, I got to work on with him. No, bullshit bullshit that kind of stuff where he is outright just saying to her I'm gonna tell your ass to get to the gym and he was so heavy on the physical he wasn't even gonna propose unless he knew how she looked like and that's where she drew the line and he still proposed right but he says that he's a freaking mess he is a mess and he needs therapy and he says that to her and she's like sign me up <laughs> and how many times have you have you seriously heard from someone say, I am a mess. Oh my gosh, I am not good for you. And you're like, yep, let's do this. Let's go, let's go, let's get on a date. Let's go have sex. Let's do whatever. And, and so this is where I feel like Love is Blind is gold, where you can watch this and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that is me. I'm a fix a hoe. <laughs> That's me. I know that I was a fix a hoe. That was me, 100%. And guess what? When I finally was done with fixing and just done with the potential and saying, I really want this, well, Will came into my life, you know? And I was like, boom. I had said no, no, no to all the potential, all the little, like, the guys that had all these, oh, I have this going on and maybe one day and, you know, I'm kind of not a good person and I, I'm kind of a loser. Like, bye. I don't have time for that move it and because I was able to move that shit out of the way I was able to have the space to receive will so AD AD is saying yes to Clay because Clay said yes to her AD should have been like bye bye to Clay and so I I don't feel like it's gonna end happily ever after I don't see it like I'm gonna be shocked if it all works out but this looks like a hot ass mess that's what this looks like um Matthew okay you guys Oh, <laughs> no, it's like, this is amazing. This is so amazing. It's so awful that it's amazing. Matthew shows up asking questions. He's like, I have a, a list of 15 questions. Pick a number. And you're like, oh, number three. Okay. And he asks you a question like, what kind of partner would you show up as? You know, or what kind of partner are you? And she goes on to say, oh, I'm loyal and whatever. How about you? And he's like, oh, I haven't even thought about my answers or like what I would say. And he just stands up and leaves. Like you guys, this is so beyond. I am about asking questions, but Matthew missed a whole big chunk of something that's beyond really important is you need to be open and vulnerable. You need to be able to also share. So do not ask a question that you are not ready to answer. Okay. And Matthew's just awkward and I don't know what's going on. And the way he acts in the room with the other men is weird and uncomfortable. And he's just like giving me serial killer vibes. Like, I don't know. That's just, that's just me. I'm not feeling him at all. And it's a mess. It's a mess. What happens with him? He ends up leaving after some girl, Amber, and hopefully she's like not giving him a chance. So let's see what happens with that. I want to talk to you guys about some success stories that I see happening that are so inspiring, okay? That I love Kenneth and Brittany and they have a, such a strong, strong bond and they have these aligned values, especially when it comes to their faith in God. And, you know, that is something that for me personally, God is the center of our family, you know? So I'm not saying to you, if you don't believe in God, you're not going to find love. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that Will and I are aligned when it comes to our values and how we raise our kids and we, we you know, end our days with prayer and things like that are really important. And I feel that with Kenneth and Brittany and they're black and white. Like they're, you know, Kenneth is a black guy, Brittany is a white girl 
and they have some differences that for sure they're concerned about how people are going to receive that, right? But they feel like their faith in God and the love that they already have in each other will not, like, will, will, that's all they need, right? And that's what I really do hope. And I don't know what's going to happen, honestly, because it just depends on their family and how supportive they are. And so let's see how that plays out. And I'm going to just talk to you about a couple more. Amy. Okay. I love Amy. I think she, she's Latina. That's why I love her. <laughs> and I'm Latina too, as you know. But something that Amy says that I love, she's like, oh my gosh, she ends up with Johnny. And she goes, in the real world, I would never have talked to Johnny. That's what she says. And this is what I'm trying to tell you is that we always are attracted. We go for our type. And what I love about Love is Blind is that you are just talking to someone through a wall and seeing if there's an emotional connection and see if your souls really connect and then you meet. And so she fell in love with Johnny in the pods and she meets him and he's like this blonde guy and totally different from what she normally goes out. She always goes out with dark hair, dark skin guys. And they're so freaking cute together. I can't stand it. So I really think you guys should check that out and see what it looks like to date someone that's not your type, right? And then the last is Laura and Jeremy. Okay. You know what? I'm not sure about Jeremy. I'm just not feeling him. I don't know. I'm getting creepy vibes with him. I, don't, I just, I'm not on board with him. I like Laura. I just feel like Laura is like this kind of like boss bitch. Um, she's like, feels like she's killing it in her life and she's not willing to settle. And I think a lot of you guys are probably in the same boat. Um, her energy is like, it can come off of a, a bit abrasive sometimes. I love it when she's vulnerable. It's so freaking beautiful. And, and I don't think she realizes the power in that. She does let her guard down with Jeremy. And to me, I just feel like, I don't know if Jeremy, and actually someone says that on the show, someone, a guy was like, are you able to handle Laura? And I don't know, like, I feel like Jeremy is also giving me man child vibes. Like, I just feel like he is not going to, I don't know, he just, he doesn't, he doesn't get how amazing Laura is. And is he going to show up for her and really be that man that she deserves that I don't know. And I'm not feeling that. Like I truly, I feel like the only guys that I absolutely love on the show, like Johnny's really great. I think so far, I think Kenneth is amazing. I love him. Um, and Clay, hell no. <laughs> and, and Chelsea's guy, Jimmy, Jimmy, I'm like, so ill with Jimmy like he's the one that was like talking about AD's body and he was flirting and I feel like he is awful for an anxiously attached person like if you're anxious and you are dating someone who is flirting with other people and not making you feel absolutely beautiful like you're the most beautiful person and, and the most beautiful person in the world like no that's only going to make you more insecure so I just I feel for Chelsea. I feel like she has chosen incorrectly. There was another guy that Chelsea was talking to, Trevor, who I loved. I was like, Trevor is it. Trevor will adore you forever. And he has all these amazing qualities. Chelsea, when, when Chelsea said yes to Jimmy, I was like totally blown away. I was like, it should have been Trevor. So that being said, I know that the other six episodes come out on the 21st. Um, which is yesterday, anyway, tomorrow, whatever, yesterday for you that are listening. And I will have to do another episode because I need to see what happens. I want Trevor back. I want Trevor back with Chelsea. I'm calling it. And let's see how hopefully Jimmy ruins it. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. I thank you for listening. I want to hear from you. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this. And I don't want you to miss out on any of these podcast episodes. I love, love this community so much. Connect with me on Instagram, the Jackie Lore. Drop me a comment in YouTube. I love to answer each and every one of you and your messages. Um, thank you so much. And don't settle for anything less than crazy love because it has to be crazy love or nothing. Until next time. Bye. Thank you.